Animal testing is very controversial. Some of you may have seen that yesterday in The Guardian, an article came out explaining why animal testing still fails to deliver on drugs. So why do farmers need animals to test new compounds? Why can't they just do it directly on humans? Well, it's very simple, because it would be way too risky to try out a new compound at an early stage on a person. So we use our next best model, animals. Now, animals may not look like us, but in fact, they are fairly similar to us. The mouse has 93% of its genes in common with us. A fruit fly does have just under 50% of its genes in common with us. So that's basically you are 60% the same as a fruit fly. So, why, so they make good robust substitutes for humans, but why do drugs still fail in clinical trials? after animal testing? Well, it might seem obvious, but animals are still not exactly the same. They're not the same as humans. So it's a bit like if you're trying to evaluate how good the Brazilian football team is by only watching the Swiss football team. It's just not good enough. <laughs> good representation, but not very good. So what can we do? Animal testing is not good to represent how drugs behave in our body. So we should use human cells, and that's what, to some extent, we do. We take out and isolate an individual human cell and put it on a 2D flat motionless surface called a Petri dish, like this one. Now, this is not bad, at least it's a human cell, and you can see if the uh, new molecule affects the target cell, but it's a bit like isolating an individual player of the football team and watching him on the training pitch to have an idea on how the entire team works. It's still not good enough. And that's why drugs fail with Petri dishes. The player and the team are subject to communicating with one another, to environmental stresses from the crowd cheering. Maybe they get stage fright. It's very different from playing on the training pitch. So what can we do? Animals are not bad, human cells are decent. What we can do is trick cells, give them the illusion that they are still in the human body, but they're not. And we do this by using biochips like these. So these may seem like pieces of plastic to you, and they're not really. They actually contain entire communities of cells, human cells living together, talking to each other, moving, changing shape, growing. And we can also induce dynamic environments in here. In this particular chip, we have circulation of fluids, just like circulation of blood in your, in your body does. So it's clearly very different from a Petri dish. So how does it work? What is inside this chip? Our design it's made of five parallel channels. One central channel, two outer channels, and two middle channels. What we do is we take out a human blood vessel cell, not a blood cell, a blood vessel cell, mix it in a gel, a blue gel, and we inject the gel in the central channel. Stay with me now, it's, it's still it's a bit slow. Then you do the same procedure with different cell types in parallel channels. So here you would have, in this case, at least two to three different cell types on this chip. Before we add the chip into the incubator where everything starts working, we put a blood-like mimicking fluid. This means it's a liquid which isn't blood, but it has oxygen and nutrients inside that enables the cells to live and breathe. We connect it to a pump the pump starts the entire process. Fluid starts flowing through, which gives it very realistic conditions. Now what happens? We stop. We do nothing. The cells have been seeded at random, floating around in a gel, similar to a Petri dish, but then, as they feel at home, nature takes over. They start talking to each other by emitting signaling molecules 
They just come from one cell and go to the other cell. And they talk and they tell each other what they should become. In this case, they're saying grow into the tissue you're programmed to become. In our case, it's blood vessel cells. So these are not computer generated. These are actual images of real cells. We just add colors so you can see them. These blood vessel cells, every little pink thing that you see are individual cells that together assemble into a capillary structure. The capillaries are very small tubes that connect arteries to veins. It's what helps tissues to live and grow. Without capillaries, you would have no tissue and ultimately no organs. A few days later, you have in our central channel an entire vascular network. So these pink things are actually capillary pipes, and you have flu flow of fluid going through them. Now, why is this important? It's important to have flu fl uh, flow going through because it mimics the dynamic environment that cells are used to. A bit like a garden hose in, in, your, in your garden, if you, a pipe, a hose. If you turn on the tap, the hose expands. If you close the tap, the hose collapses. So you need to have flow to keep the vessel stable. And that's what we have done. Our next step is to add uh, heart cells in the center of this chamber to allow the heart cells to grow into a tissue, to then deliver a drug and see how the drug affects the heart cell. Now, how is this better? Or how does this reduce animal testing? Animals are still complex environments. Why is it really better? Well, for two reasons. The first, we are using human cells and not animal cells to represent how a drug would behave on a human, in the human body. The second reason, is that we can monitor the activity of the drug in real time. Real time really means you can see with a camera the drug entering the tissue, the activity the drug has across the tissue, and we can then see the effect the drug has. This is a bit like having a very small microscope fixed inside the mouse's body. And you can just see what is happening without having to kill the mouse. It's a huge improvement. So this is blood vessels on the chip, soon to be heart on chip. Other people have worked on brain, lungs, stomach, even kidneys and more organs on chips. The next step would be to try to connect these together by little tubes to make what's called a human on the chip. It is possible. You would then deliver the drug destined for the heart on the chip, and see how it affects the kidney on the chip, or if it triggers an immune response down the bone marrow on the chip, essentially recreating an entire organism on chips. But the really interesting thing is that these are used with human cells. We could then extend this to using each individual patient's cells, delivering true personalized medicine to test out drugs on directly which drug is best for each patient, and leaving our animals as our collaborators instead of test subjects. Thank you.